Hello everybody, this is Dave Parry from Wellmeadow and you're listening to the SME Growth Podcast. Most businesses want to grow and we're going to share lots of different ideas on how to get more leads and convert them to customers. In today's podcast, we'll be showing you a case study and listening to the team talking about how they helped a food retail client to engage more of their customers online. If you want to have a look at any of the material from the podcast, then please go to our website at wellmeadow.co.uk or have a look at the link in the show notes below. Thanks. Welcome to another episode of the Wellmeadow podcast. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at some more case study work and just talking through and hopefully you find it interesting. So today we're going to have a look, I think, at Cornell's. So if I, shall I just give a little background? Yeah, go, so go ahead. Give did. So, okay, so we were involved in a project um, as part of a COVID recovery, Shropshire COVID recovery, um, where we got some grant money to help out local businesses with marketing and digital transformation type of thing. So Cornell's, um, we'll fly there. We're in the process <laughs> of of looking to rebrand anyway. Previously, the company had, called been, had been Barkworth. They Barkworth, were a local yeah. um, fishmonger. So we happened to know the owner, and he was looking, he'd owned the business. Uh, Ian had owned the business for nearly 20, 20 years, years or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was still trading under the Barkworth name, and his surname's Cornell, so he wanted to actually put his kind of name above the door. So... He was looking to do that anyway, so we we said, look, why don't we try and help you a little bit here and just take it beyond what you might consider for just a normal rebrand and a little bit of a website upgrade. Yeah. And we looked at going to redo the website, but also add on an e-commerce shop and then almost move it in that direction of sort of a HelloFresh type style. Can we start doing like recipe cards? Can we start recording recipes? Can we start doing that? So it was a pretty big... I mean, we were kind of not not so much biting off more than we could chew. It, but grew, it grew with our ambition, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. as the and we've got bigger plans for it yet, but they're to be uh, to be yeah to be realised, to be realised and revealed. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So effectively, you know, if we maybe if we go through the process of talking about the website first. So we started off with the website. Um. There yep. wasn't. They previously had recipes on their website, um, and that was kind of a big focus of the of the site was to make it more lifestyle orientated. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they're they're being a fishmonger. They're a bit more premium than the fish that you buy in a supermarket. Um, so we wanted to give them that sort of look and feel and what what that means. And then yeah, and Ian's a lot more about sort of Cornish life. Um, so trying to give it that sort of feel as well. So that sort of seaside cuisine, all sort of mixing it in. Sustainability angle. But yeah, so a lot of the stuff that they sell is fished from day boats. So not these yeah. big. So that, that was an important message to try and get across. But also they're very kind of family orientated. Kids work in the business. Yeah. Um, sort of that family mealtime ethos was part of what we're trying to get across here to say, look, it's not that difficult to cook fish really well yeah you, cook cook really delicious meal like really yeah. delicious meals yeah very quickly as well because fish fish cooks really easily um so it's yeah creating a whole sort of series of the what you call midweek meals almost um where you could just throw some stuff into the pan feed quite a lot of people quite simply i suppose now because you can kind of get recipes from anywhere like it's so easy to just go online and be like oh i have to cook something to, to give them the whole package of like you're selling the family dinner you're selling the simplicity you're selling the quality you're yeah. selling sustainability sets them apart from just why should i go there rather than just google how to cook yeah, yeah. exactly and we we're trying to like with the e-commerce thing if people were to order fish online they would then receive some of these recipe recipe cards with their order that's the idea going forward and then maybe build like into that so on the recipe card you could have a little spotify playlist where it's like you've got your cornish yeah. seagulls or in the background I can't say seagulls apparently my daughter always Tells me off for saying seagulls. Apparently, it's just gulls that live by the sea. I don't know. Just is that a thing? It's, I don't know. Everyone knows it's seagulls. Well, yeah. yeah it's, if you just like gulls, people would be like, "What?" what? Gulls. Like a road yeah, there's lots of different. Yeah, I don't know, that's Car what I said. Girl. But try and <laughs> argue that with an 11 year old. It's just, I get into a lot. Of get, trouble. get her in here, get her and in then we'll uh, debate it. Debate put, it live. All right. Yeah. On the podcast. 
So yeah, so the whole idea is to try and make it really simple. Um, so like the simplicity of having quality ingredients and quality food is also matched on the website. So you could come on, be inspired by what you were seeing um, in terms of the produce and the recipes, get it ordered, get it home, get it cooked and enjoy kind of having a meal with friends and family. So that's that's kind of the whole ethos behind it. Yes. Um, so... So yeah, so and, and I guess the benefit of this as well that we had was that Ian's already done quite a bit of show cooking. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shows he's got a couple of recipes published in local uh, recipe books and things like that. So it's not it wasn't like we were dealing with someone who'd never done this type of thing. So when we said to him, "Look, this is our kind of vision for your website," like picking up on where you kind of sit personally, what your experience is, where you want to take the brand, all of this type of thing, was that we think the best way to sell this is to get you cooking and, and to get you showing the produce off. Um, and he was really up for it, wasn't he? So. Oh yeah. He was, he was, he was a real game for it. And he was brilliant in front of camera, actually, which you'll probably see in the videos in a bit, but he was, um, yeah, he certainly knows his stuff. Well, people buy passion, don't they? If you've got someone that loves their project, knowledge project, product even, and knowledgeable about their product, it shows. And that's what people want. They want the faith that someone knows what they're doing. And obviously Ian. Yes. Good. Good fish energy. Yeah, <laughs> good fish energy. I like that, <laughs> fish energy. So, yeah, so we were kind of, um, we were looking around. So, I mean, I guess we could talk about the filming of it, can't we? That's, that's, yeah, that, we that's probably that, yeah. a bit more interesting than just going through the website side of things. Um, but, yeah, so we were kind of looking around for a venue because we didn't just want to film it in somebody's kitchen or something. We wanted it to be a little bit special, a little bit nice. So we got in touch with Marcus Bean, who's a local celebrity chef, and he... Um, knew Ian anyway, so Ian's kind of really well connected with all the yes. local uh, restaurants. Supplies, supplies, loads supplies of restaurants. fish. And um, so he uh, let us have the run of Brompton Cookery School um, for the day, which was, I've got to say, it was a pretty pretty full on day. So our, our schedule for the day was to try and film 10 recipes, I think. We, so we were combining filming and photo shoot at the same time. So we would shoot the raw product, he would then cook the meal, and then we'd shoot the finished meal. So it was like trying to, it was triple whammy, really, on the day. And yeah, we were trying to, it was eight, it was eight recipes. Eight recipes. Eight recipes, and uh, I think it was eight or ten platters yeah. as well, seafood yeah, platters. Seafood wow. platters. <laughs> so it was a lot. So it was, it was a, lot. It was a full on a full-on day. Um, so we had, like, all the ingredients were there. We had... Um, we had a guy, Pete, come in to help us film. Um, yep. You and Josh were doing photography. Yeah. Um, Ian was cooking. Ian was cooking. And you were sous chef. I was sous chefing because we sort of realized on the day, I think for a lot of us, it was our first kind of like food shoot that, right, we've got to make a fish pie, but we don't want to hang around for like. Yes. I mean, like, yeah, that is a point. To, <laughs> that is a point to make that we like none of us had done like a filming day for a food there at all. So we were completely all of us going in blind. Um, and yeah, it, it turned out to be quite a fun day, though. It was really, uh, uh, to be honest, it was a really fun day. And I think once we got the system down and we worked out, OK, well, what meals do we need prep for so that we could go away and prep that? And it was like, I don't know, it was like really fun because it was like kind of, you see these shows like, I don't know, cooking shows, like Ready Steady Cook or whatever. And they've all got their little bowls of ingredients that are all ready. And it was like, cool, yeah. like we're doing this kind of thing. So, so yeah, so we got all that sorted and um, like, yeah, it was, it was, it was a pretty fun day actually. I yeah, yeah. I mean, we, there was loads of little things. Like we, we, when we first arrived there, we realized it was a hard tiled floor and both me and Rich were wearing shoes that were clicking and clacking around. <laughs> so the whole day then we were walking around in our socks. <laughs> um, <laughs> we were like clicking and clacking like tap dancing. <laughs> so yeah, we've got a bit of a thing about tap dancing at the moment. Yeah, you have a thing about tap dancing. It's not that. Well, I, I don't know. It's, I think I feel it's being blown into something more than it actually is. <laughs> But yeah, if you're gonna tap dance, just commit. So <laughs> just like you committed to filming recipes, exactly. we're gonna get that get printed on a t-shirt <laughs> for you. <laughs> like we committed to uh, getting involved in this. But no, in all fairness, it was a really great. Like we had a really great team. We had another guy in, uh, Cam, who was sort of just helping out. He was just helping like, clear away during clear away. F you know, it's amazing. Like the amount of plates of food you go through, and then the whole kind of like, like we've cooked something. We filmed it, we photoed it. 
oh right. what do we do with right. it now right. now we've got to eat it like uh, so. i won't lie i'm really jealous <laughs> <laughs> that part. i'm very jealous so we just kind of yeah i've never eaten so much fish in one oh, day and in, and the food it tasted so bad it was so <laughs> <laughs> but, and then that was it so, like, so we had like the fish pie so i'd made a fish pie um oh yeah yeah like yeah, a, yeah yeah as like a sous chef so that it could be the one that went in the oven and then so we yeah we're trying out. to do like a bit of a blue peter of like <laughs> this is one we made earlier yeah, so <laughs> you put out like, this freshly made fish pie like two seconds after it had like gone in the oven so like i'd made a fish pie beforehand ian had made a fish pie for the recipe and so at the end of the day, it was like, right, well, whose fish pie <laughs> is, a bit of competition. Is, is the best? Did you win? That's the, well, that's the important question. I don't know. I think I was sabotaged a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think he... he well, the, the, the re, the re, I mean, the main reason we were doing that, apart from the a friendly bit of competition, was because we just, in the day, we generally just didn't have time to be able to wait for a f- one fish pie to cook yeah. after Ian's prepped it. Um, so we had one in the oven pretty early on in the day because it was like yeah, four, yeah. 40 minutes yeah. that it took takes to cook one of these things and it was um yeah so we had we had two lots of fish pie which was like meant to feed eight people anyway yeah, one a, there was a lot of fish pie that was a lot, a lot of fish pie. pie and that was on top of like eight other meals so by the time we got to the fish pie it was like so yeah oh it was also tasty though i'm getting hungry right now thinking i am getting it. hungry thinking about it so yeah i don't know like so this is you know the cornell's website in here you know so we've got all these recipes so like this is one of the ones we're looking about the you know, so Mediterranean tasty. sea bass. So you can see there, you know, there's kind of like roasted potatoes, potatoes, roasted garlic. Again, like those sorts of things, like roasted <sighs> potatoes. That was another thing we got there. I thought, well, right, okay, we've got to get those going. And so there's quite a lot of like logistical planning and all this that was, but it was just super fun. Like I mean, and I guess when you're doing something with food, you're kind of like everyone's in a happy get, mood you anyway. Get <laughs> you get to eat it at the end, so. Um, Although, like, after, like, sort of five other guys have dug their fork into it and mushed it round, it was, you know. Well, yeah, well, actually, yeah. So the first dish that we did was a salmon, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and someone was a bit too keen getting their fork oh, yeah. into it. I, start, I started eating it before they photographed it. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to do another bit. Like, I hadn't had much breakfast. But, yeah, I mean, like, the Mediterranean Sea. By the, by the time we got onto the Mediterranean Sea bass, uh, I'd, oh. I'd learned the etiquette. <laughs> and then they keep me away from the food until um until everything's been done with it get the green light then you can well yeah yes until until the final dish that we cooked which was the salmon the t- uh, salmon on, oh, yeah. smoked salmon so on we got, toast we got to the end of the day and like ian's like do you want to do a recipe like he was quite tired by the end of the day you know bless yeah him. he'd been trying all day to well he'd been again. been on camera for like yeah. six yeah. hours at this point so at that point he's like right he's going to call in the big guns as a sous chef i've been sous chef I, i'd earned my stripes by the end of the day <laughs> <laughs> so he said do you want to do originally i was going to do it on my own and he said do you want to just do it he just wanted a break and i said well look it's kind of it's your gig here like I'll, i don't mind standing in the background like like you see on saturday morning kitchen isn't it i'm like the the sort of celebrity well not that i'm a celebrity <laughs> <laughs> i might be after this but, <laughs> but the that is just standing around in the background. Yeah, token helper. Yeah. So we got to make smoked salmon scrambled eggs. And there was, I would say, I don't know, you have to watch the video, but there's, 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 we had some philosophical differences on how you cook scrambled <laughs> eggs. But given that it was his gig, I thought I'll just let him do uh, his method. Yeah. But... Um, no, yeah, it was, and um, yeah, you were a bit eager to try the smoked salmon at the end, weren't you? Because I, rem- I remember, is I've got this flashback of, of we had just finished in his last dish, and everyone was like, "Yeah, great, okay, finished, we can start packing up and everything like that." And I just see Rich walking away with the plate of salmon, like smoked salmon on toast, and we're like, "We haven't photographed it yet, Rich." She's like, oh. "Just keen, but yeah." So it was one of those. I don't know. I could play a little bit of the, little mm. bit of the clip be using these amazing smoked salmon trimmings um, so we were really lucky with this location like um it's a beautiful the, location yeah because it, it the the set of a working kitchen with all the little bits around you all the utensils and all that kind of stuff is is so important um and you don't realize it like if you're just in someone's kitchen it wouldn't yeah. have been so just big. all the cookbooks and just like yeah the whole like kind of ambiance so looking a bit nervous there actually First time, you know, just gonna add beard needs a bit of trimming that as well. There's a bit, yeah, yeah. bit, lumber, <laughs> bit lumberjack going on there. You were very lumberjack that whole day, really. 
in your little trucker cap and I've got to say this this is the longest ever cook of scrambled eggs oh yeah the, I had to cut it down as well like yeah. it, it's quite a long cook in the video anyway but it's like 10 minutes longer than that so, because the heat wasn't on yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah for a good part of it like I've got to turn the heat on was um, that your job though well I don't know you look where we're standing I think I'd probably blame Ian for that yeah um, <laughs> but yeah like I'd probably so there's I 10 minutes of this of of because he's using a fork to to um a whisket in the in the pot and so the fork scraping so there's 10 minutes of fork scraping against metal so i think i tip top tip would be to use a wooden spoon yes the scrambled egg. i'd yeah. also try and get the pan as hot as you can before you put it in then take it off the heat then put your eggs in don't season your eggs too soon and then like just make sure they just come off the heat now i get a bit keen here with the old toast because we're nowhere near ready this is the whole thing like, like i got the toast ready like I don't know, about a good, a good five minutes before um, the eggs were ready. So, and then, uh, yeah, I didn't have enough space on that. That's terrible butter in that, isn't it, really? Yeah. It's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit, sla <laughs> bit slapdash. Really. Bit brutal with the knife there, crashing that porto. So there was a load of good outtakes in this as well, because it was taking so long. It was just like, well, we're running that out of things. Banter. We're running out of things here to talk about. So, but I don't think they made the final cut. Look at that arrangement there, that toast. Professional there. toast arrangement. Yeah, cut, 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 cutting the toast there with, with the butter knife. <laughs> yeah. Look at that arrangement there. Me thinking, right, what am I going to do now? Just wipe my hands all over that. Yeah, great. <laughs> so he's still stirring. I mean, there's a lot of concentration going on there. A lot of concentration, still stirring that. There there <laughs> Fade, out. Fade out, carry on, come back to it five minutes later. It's like, are these eggs actually cooking or not? It's one of several cuts in it. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I don't know. You can see it goes on for a long time. So, if you really want to spend a lot of time learning how to cook scrambled eggs, this is a great video. Yeah, yeah. The video is longer than it actually takes to cook scrambled to cook eggs. Scrambled <laughs> eggs yeah, like you could cook scrambled eggs. So, you can quickly. follow along. So I don't know. I'll scroll it, scroll it through. Like he's still cooking, still cooking. Another couple of minutes. And we finally get to the point. Here we go. This, Play this is what up. we want to see. <laughs> There we go. Nice scrambled eggs. Oh, look at that. And he's gone for a mixture in here. I think he put some of the, some of the some salmon, salmon in. into the egg and then a little bit on top as well, just oh. for like a little artistic kind of vibe. Uh, a little bit of parsley, I think. Yeah, parsley. Sometimes there you is. put a little bit of cheese. And oh, cheese? What am I talking about? Cheese. <laughs> Chives, I meant. Chives. <laughs> Cheesy scrambled eggs are good though, but not maybe not with smoked salmon. Yeah, brilliant. It was it. So the filming of it was actually really, really quite simple because um, it was a four four camera setup, so that you could just sort of let everything roll while he, while he was cooking. You weren't having to like move cameras yeah. around and cut shots. It was just you sort of left it going, nicely framed. Um, yeah, it was a really good. Those videos come out a lot better than I remember as well. They, they yeah. look such like really nice quality. So yeah. worth the stress of the day by the sounds of it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. But well, I think I think the, the the shoot wasn't stressful really because it's really interesting when you when you have such energy on such good energy where, where everyone's really happy and chirpy and gets on really well. Yeah. Uh, there, it just made everything fly by so easily. Like everyone knew so their roles, slick. didn't they? Everyone knew what they were doing. Everyone had a role. There was no kind of like ambiguity as to what was going on. And um, we just got the whole thing. And I think probably the location as well, because there was so much space and we had like six different island units to yes. work on. So we had like a filming, a, a photography island, a prep island, a cleanup island. Uh, you know, just having that amount of space meant that we could work efficiently. If you were trying to do that in someone's kitchen, yeah, home, it'd just be I too mean, small. It'd be a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. So. So then we took all of that content from the video day and the photo shoot and we just turned them into these recipe cards. So, I mean, this is the one that we did for the smoked hammock, smoked haddock gratin, which was another meal we did. So you can see we're really so like, tasty. you know, you're going back and looking over there like, oh my goodness, so hungry. Um, and then just break that down into like, you know, kind of almost like, you know, that kind of Hello Fresh Gusto style of um, things so that people can actually watch the video if you want to see how it's done. Um, get the ingredients in, cooking tips, all that kind of thing. So it's pretty cool. So we've got all of these now ready to go. Chili and basil crab linguine. 
No, the crab small. is really rich tasting. That really surprised me. There's a smoked salmon. Look at that. That's a breakfast. Your expert oh. toast there. Expert. Well, yeah, I'd say probably the toast there deserves a bit more comment, really. It's, uh, <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I did, I'd notice I didn't make the... Uh, the actual kind of um, no, no. Your hands, your hands made the cut there. You're but you're buttering the bread. I uh, know I'm up above, aren't I? I'm going the wrong way here. That's the, that's the perfect way to ah. start a day. That's the one. Yes. Okay. That's yeah. The you Cornish classic it. is the um, ah. Yeah. That's the is the, the crab sandwich. Not to my liking, to be honest. It's a bit too strong for me. So. Mm. But oh, the fish cakes. They were pretty good. Delicious. Like you're just going through this now. Just oh, yeah, I know. I'm just I'm sitting here now, just kind of like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the worst time as well. It's like lunchtime recording this, just going like, oh, so hungry. Like, but yeah, so it's actually. So then after all, we did all the recipes, and then we had to film all the platters as well. So Ian assembled all of those. And so that's where we think there could be some interesting growth area there. Yes, for mail order platters. So in terms of like, yeah, in terms of content strategy for this, we're we're utilizing these these recipe videos as pillar content, so that there's a lot that we can pull out of it to to break down into social media, little snippets snippets of the finished dish, snippets of the dish being plated up, that kind of stuff. So actually, out of this one filming day, not only have we got the videos to go onto yeah. the the site or the pictures to go into the recipes and recipe cards we've actually probably produced a couple of hundred pieces of at least i think i think we could probably break down each you could probably take each recipe break it down into 10 different little component bits you know across multiple different platforms you're probably getting between i don't know 30 to 40 bits of content maybe per recipe yeah including the things like the recipe card and the blog and the page that it's on and all that type of stuff. And so across eight recipes, you're looking at, I don't know, like say three three hundred ish bits of content, maybe. Yeah. So so for one for one filming day, the amount amount of output that you get from this. And that's that's sort of we've like it was part of the plan to be so efficient yeah. with it. Um and you really got to maximize the time that you do th- like maximize your time when you're doing these kind of things. And this is a brilliant way to do it is utilizing that pillar content yeah. like that. And I think so the key to it really is to plan out it beforehand, have the, have in mind the intention of like, okay, what do we want to do? What's we'll start with the end in mind? What do we want to do with this? Plan out what we want to do, get all the right shots, get everything that we need. And then you've got that opportunity then to say, right, we can leverage this content. Yeah. this like eight hours of everyone's time in a day, leverage it all out, make three or so hundred bits of content out of it. And that's just one element of this. There's another element we're looking at in terms of, okay, how do we capture some of Ian's knowledge through just doing like little TikTok videos of him cutting up the fish or preparing stuff or descaling or deboning or whatever it is that fishmongers do. So yeah, like all of that type <laughs> of stuff. And it's it's good like ASMR type of things. And then this is, is you know, it's kind of the, the gift that keeps on giving in a sense. Like we'd love to do... Um, like a barbecue, like a oh yeah, so so one. you can do themed like, like days of this. So we do another day that's barbecue, another day that's maybe Christmas. Like this is fish taco recipe that I saw, and I was just like, oh man, we just basically have to film it just so we can eat those. Yeah, I yeah, would yeah. like to come to that day. For <laughs> <laughs> There's everyone queuing up. Yeah, but yeah, I have, com- we'll have a competition, so you get to come. I it's the main. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's the I'm main reason. <laughs> It's the main reason we're trying to push for more video days with Ian is just so we can. Yeah. <laughs> so if any food. other like maybe like a butchers or something yeah, is yeah. interested oh, in yeah. like us digitalizing their website, filming content, we like steak, we <laughs> like burgers, we will, sausage. Yeah, we will volunteer we will as tribute. Food. You know, we will <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> throw so, sort of <laughs> <laughs> to a point. <laughs> throw ourselves upon that sword. You know. So yeah, so hopefully that's an interesting insight just into just what you can get out of you know a well planned film day, um, with which linked into a bigger web de- redesign concept and also kind of more of a business transformation in terms of taking the business from a physical presence to a more digital presence, um, and then all the stuff that came alongside that in terms of content creation. Yeah, well, the, the, all the filming... So we weren't originally planning to do any of the filming, were we? No. It was... We, we looked at the website, and we wireframed out the website, designed what we wanted, and we were like, actually, we need a whole load of video content, and that's where yeah. it came out. And then we planned from there to yeah. get 
to get everything that we needed for the website and then that just sort of progressively developed into so it's all kind of come not quite full circle but the whole thing has worked together to almost become something greater than some of its parts yes but Anyway, we probably need to wrap this up now because I'm just getting super hungry. I'm so <laughs> hungry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can literally feel my stomach rumbling just staring at all this food and, you know, it being lunchtime and everything. So, so yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed that podcast and, um, yeah, hopefully you, it's been useful. If you want to have a nice family meal or just have something that's uh, a little bit different for dinner, then head over to Cornell Seafood and get yourself some... Uh, nice fish thanks for listening to the sme growth podcast please subscribe to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts from and tell all your business friends in the next episode we'll be talking about marketing automation until then uh, good luck with your business